Scott, great to see you. Uh, thank you for having me. So uh, we're so excited about actually you know, working together with AWS. Years, years and years ago, we had a very a wonderful relationship with, uh, with Amazon, mm -hmm. and we have lots of customers in common. Uh, I think we both listen. To, we both listen to those customers. Yeah. Um, some of them certainly asked me over and over again, when are we going to be able to use the Oracle database uh, inside of AWS? Yeah. And now we can tell them that will be December in 2024. Yeah, it's uh, it's something we're super excited about as well. Um, we have, uh, as you mentioned, there's there's a a wide variety of customers who choose to run in AWS. It's the, the most popular cloud out there. And they love the security of AWS, they love the scalability of AWS, and they want to run some of their most mission critical workloads. They already run them on Oracle. And they were having a tr trouble figuring out how do I pick A or B? And they said, I want to pick A and B. And they really wanted to run all of those mission critical workloads inside of AWS where their applications are, but they need low latency to their database. And that's uh, what we're super excited about rolling out. and. Uh, many customers um, uh, have talked about already, have excited about what they're doing there. We'll take an example of, of somebody like a Best Buy who runs many of their systems inside of AWS. They have uh, recommendations for their customers and, and, uh, and lots of interesting e-commerce applications. And they run their core workload, database workloads on Oracle. And, and uh, they were trying to figure out how do I get my rack workloads together to work in a low latency way with all their applications. This is a great solution for them. Yeah, I know. I mean, customer, giving customers choices has always been always been good for our business. Yes. And, I, and you give your customers lots and lots of choices in AWS, uh, and I think it's going to work out well for us and well for all all the people here today. Yeah. What what I've found is that when we listen to customers and we and we really listen to what they're looking for, that's when we deliver an outstanding product. And I think one of the cool things that we haven't talked about yet too, which is just this integration is it's. Part of moving the, the Exadata actual hardware and, and the and Oracle Rack capabilities um, inside of the AWS data center, but it's not, it doesn't even stop there. We actually, and, and the teams did a great collaboration here. When they listen to customers, they want it to feel like a native AWS right. service that's running there. And so there's lots of integrations where when you take backups of your Oracle database, it actually saves it in the customer's S3 bucket so that they have access to that into their AWS account. There's native integrations in, in zero ETL where customers want to take the data that's inside of their Oracle database, pull it into something like SageMaker to do ML and analytics, and, uh, and then push some of that data back into the, the, the system of record where they're running in the Oracle database. All of that is enabled natively uh, as you run here. And you can even purchase it through the AWS marketplace. So it all comes to you on your AWS bill, all through the AWS console. So I, I think customers are going to really love that native feeling integration where it kind of feels and works really well together. Yeah, no, I agree with you. That's what the customers have been asking for. And uh, as we decided that there would be no price distinction in, in mm -hmm. the sense uh, the same, uh, the, the Oracle database on AWS is the same price as the Oracle database on OCI. Yep, same uh, price, same performance, same everything. Same yep. price, same performance, same features, same functions, mm -hmm. uh, all, all, ex all exactly the same. Uh, you can get support both from AWS and from Oracle. Yep. Uh, and uh, again, we're, we think this dramatically expands the market. It's what customers have asked for for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, my friend, uh, I'll, I'll name Jamie Diamond, uh, has got huge commitments, uh, JP Morgan Chase, huge commitments uh, to uh, AWS. And he was, uh, every time he's, uh, he saw me, he asked me when, you know, when are we gonna have it at AWS? Yeah. And now I finally have, a, have an answer. Thank you, thank you, Matt. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> and and it's, it's, you know, there's, there's actually already a pretty impressive list of enterprises that are really excited about this. Folks from Vodafone were, were frustrated about having their environment actually fractured across multiple different places. And they're super excited about bringing these things together here. The folks in, uh, at ExxonMobil, where they run highly regulated workloads. Right. And they run those in AWS because they love the security and scalability, but they also run them on Oracle database. And customers are just super excited about being able to bring these together. It also speeds that migration. You know, a lot of customers are wanting to move to the cloud. And the more we can make it easy for them to use the components and the, the applications that they love and that they, they use as part of their, um, their operating environment and make it easy to migrate those without having to change those out, the faster many of these customers can go on that modernization journey and get out of their own data centers where, um, and they can focus on, on, um, on really modernizing that entire stack. Exactly. And 
when we uh, release 23 AI or and, and the successor to 23 AI, the same day it's released in the Oracle Cloud, it's going to be released in the AWS Cloud. AWS awesome. Cloud. Uh, so there's going to be absolute parity, uh, whether it's pricing, support, uh, availability dates uh, between the Oracle Cloud and the AWS Cloud with uh, the, uh, the Oracle database services. So we think that's what customers want, and we're mm -hmm. thrilled uh, that this is working out. And and how quickly uh, you guys are responding to get this thing live before the end of the year. Yeah, so we'll be, uh, we'll be out in preview at the end of this year in, in one availability zone, or in one region, and then we'll be quickly launching to other regions as we, get, as we hear demand from others of where people are looking at it. So uh, please let us know if there's other regions around where you all operate in that, uh, that we can roll this out to. Actually, we've got someone here who, who can tell you what regions he wants. Awesome, that's we've great. Got, uh, we, we have a customer that's gonna join us on stage, Andy Zitney. Uh, the Chief Technology Officer of State Street will come out and join us, and, and, uh, and I'm sure he'll have some questions. <laughs>
Great. And I, I'm sure you can do development uh, on a single data a single data center. I'm sure all of your uh, all of your your operational systems have to be fault tolerant, and they have to run in multiple multiple data centers available in multiple data centers. Do you do you tend to cluster those around the East Coast separately from the West Coast, or how do you operate? Um, we we have a parity paired data center model, so we have parity in region, and then we have an outer region recovery. So that spreads us everywhere. We're we're implementing that in all regions: Asia, EMEA, U.S. So it does spread our footprint out a bit. Um, so we do need the technology, like I say. I hate to use the word everywhere, but we okay. definitely need the services pretty much everywhere. Oh, I've got one last question, but, but how many different data centers, AWS data centers, do you think you will be in? When you say, when you say everywhere, is, is that a single country in Europe, or are you gonna be in multiple oh. countries in Europe, Asia? What is, what is that, how many actual locations are we talking about? Yeah, I think when we when we looked at our current footprint, we're in about 43 different locations. Whoa. <laughs> um, we're hoping to scale that back down to a 30 number. So it is different countries due to data restrictions, right? You can't move it out of country. So we do require that. So it will be in multiple countries. You know, we're thinking the number is going to be 30 to 40 at the end. Wow. But again, when it's when it's our data center, that's a huge cost. Yeah. It's your data center. I'm only paying for what I use. <laughs> makes it much easier, and now putting Oracle in that data center, I don't need an on-prem as much as I used to. We can operate in the cloud with a couple of trusted partners. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, well, it looks like you and I have some work to do. Excellent, I guess I... We've, got some, <laughs> we've got some rollout plans. We'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely get that prioritized list and get going on it. Yeah, definitely, looking awesome. forward to it. Okay, we're looking Excellent. forward to it too. Awesome. Announcement. Cool, thank you so much. Thank you, Matt, this is great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matt.